Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Xuan. I work on front-end technologies at Bidance. For years, we've been using a technology called Links that help web developers to build mobile native apps. So I've been wondering, how good is Solo at developing mobile apps with Links? Well, let's try it out. I've already got a Links starter app running on my iPhone. Now let's ask Solo. Be creative with the background gradient. Go. Well, Solo first comes back with a plan. But since we're pretty much vibe coding here, let's just execute the plan. And now Solo is going solo. If you want to see what it's doing, you can turn on the flow mode and expand the tools panel. Da, da, da. It's writing a lot of code. Wait, what? Electric stone. Now I'm really curious. Solo also decides to run a production build to verify if everything worked. But we haven't seen anything interesting yet. Mm, so let's check what it actually built. Looks like it created four actual gradients and you can tap the logo to cycle through them. Very creative. You ready? That's tap. Oh, wow. That's astonishing. I love how this gradient feels like it's breathing. Hmm. This must be the electric stone. I gotta show you this with my phone. So cool, right? It's pretty dope that you can vibe code mobile apps, but that's not stopped there. In real world UI engineering, we often start from a design file. If the coding agent can be more aware of that design context, it can make much better choices. Here we can have a Figma file right inside a tree, and you can feed this screen directly via this add to chat button. Let's say, follow this Figma design, build a two column waterfall list of gradients. Solo comes back with a plan, um, this time, I actually want to look at that to make sure we align on the direction. So it's using the correct UI elements and it's going to implement the exact gradients from the Figma. That's nice. It says varying heights. Let me add that. I want them to be stable, actually. All right, looking good. That's execute the plan. Seems like it's the app is broken now. Oh, okay. Once CSS is finished, it kind of did it. I can't help myself to try it right now. Okay, it's working perfectly. And Solo is again verifying with a production build. Passed. One shot. Again. So now you may be wondering, how does Solo knows Lynx so well? Since Lynx is newly open source, like any other institutional knowledge, External foundational model have not been pre-trained with those data. To bridge the gap, we built our own knowledge bases, namely link space, so we can provide that actual context to Solo through Model Context Protocol, or MCP. So in the earlier conversation, Solo actually consulted with the link space sub-agent before making the plan. You can see it querying our documentation via MCP, verifying the facts, and then eventually handing it back to the main solo coder to continue coding. Here at the agent panel, you can see the link space agent we customized. We configured solo to consult it for any links project, and we configured link space MCP at the MCP panel here. What if we could not only help solo think, but also give it hands and eyes? That's why we've built the Lynx Dev to MCP, and we can also make it a sub-agent of Solo. Let's try this prompt. Add a 3D flip animation when a list item is tapped. And we ask the Lynx Dev to agent to verify it. As you can see, Solo cleverly decided to mark each card with a number so it can see them more clearly when verifying with its own eyes and now invoke the Delta sub-agent to help verify the results. Oh, it successfully flipped the card zero. And card one and card three. So after taking a screenshot and confirming that card three was indeed flipped after simulated tap, 
The DevTools subagent verify that Solo implemented everything correctly. It's great to see them help each other. I still have no idea why it decided to flip card 3 instead of card 2. Maybe that's finally the time for a human to flip it.